emptiness do we uh ah, it's just a background talking? image but it looks it looks nice oh <laughs> nice I figure since you know we're talking about a specific game, I can throw up a, a nice little throw image. Throw a little bit of flair up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let people know what we're doing. Yeah. And you know, make it just feel... in case they can't read. Okay. Well, hey, yeah. you never know. You never. Know. It is the internet. It, it definitely is. What game are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Darkness Two. Spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> Y'all spoiling. <laughs> Tell me you have a sign that goes spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't even bother like warning people about spoilers for it because it's <laughs> fairly obvious that that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, what was? Yeah, no, we kept having Skype problems though, so we're gonna probably try out something different for uh, like casting next time. I've heard Google uh, Hangouts is pretty solid. Uh, we're gonna tr actually try Utalks. Oh, I've never heard of that. It's it's straight peer to peer. Ooh, interesting. So it could it could either go really well or really poorly. Well, I will use you as a guinea pig then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will see what happens. Uh, but yeah, no, my uh, buddy of mine turned me on to it because I had heard of, uh, about the Tox project. I was like, oh, that's cool, just peer to peer like Skype replacement, and then an actual decent client came out for it. So I'm like, all right, all right, let's do this. Yeah. See what happens. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, God. I need... I, I definitely need a nap. Yeah, me too. Why don't we just nap live? Napcast. Just watch me drool all over my beard live. <laughs> uh, that'd be good. That'd be real good. All right. Well, I'll just get, get, get my hood just kind of... Yeah. Just pillow it up. Yeah. Airplane yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I played a bunch of stuff today. I didn't play a lot this week, but I played a bunch of different stuff today. I've played a little bit of a lot of stuff, and then yeah. a lot of one game. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. Very excited to talk about one of these games. Yeah? Yes. Is one of them in alpha? Uh, No. Okay. Are you talking about Evolve? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't Ooh, get there, to play that, Evolve. <laughs> that is a mixed bag right now. Uh, oh, I've, oh, I've, oh, just watching, I've uh, got some thoughts, let's just say that. I'm actually watching, uh, right before we started recording this, I was watching um, the Giant Bomb guys. Uh, Mary from GameSpot was playing it on um, on Professional Fridays. And it looks, it looks like, well, we'll talk about it during the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. Looks like a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It looks pretty good on PC. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, are you guys ready to start this thing? Start this biz? Yeah. Do yeah, this we'll thing? Start. Do it up. Kick this banana stand? Yes. So Is there money, money in it? In the band, it? There's <laughs> always money in the banana stand. I, hate, I, I am upset with people they don't get that joke. Always money in the banana sand. I am. I mean, Did you like... burn down the storage unit? Almost oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I blew myself. <laughs> I miss There's... Patrice O'Neill. It's so sad he's dead. I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bummer. I'm you stuck hear... with Cat Williams <sighs> and Suge Knight, who just got arrested. There's no justice hey, in this world. Douchebags. Yeah. Did you guys hear about Wayne Static? No. He died. I'm sorry, what? what? <laughs> the lead singer of Static X died. What happened? Wait, wait. Nobody knows. Wait, the full hair, long oh, yeah. beard? Bad yeah, beard? Slim Jim guy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, he apparently he died. When did that happen? Uh, a day or two ago. Uh, died November 1st, 2014, Joshua oh. Tree, California. Death. Mm. Here we go. On the night of November 1st, 2014, three, year, three days before his 49th birthday... Static died at 9 p.m. Rumors have stated that his death was caused by a drug overdose, but this has not been officially announced. Well, I mean... So no. it's a drug overdose. Yeah. yeah. That was Wikipedia. It, was it at the Joshua Tree? Uh, it sounds like it. <laughs> if only, man. <laughs> we still gotta go there. Just it's go not on. very far from where we live. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Stop licking the fucking floor. I can't... Oh. <laughs> 
can't. I, I have headphones on and I can still hear that, you lappy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Oh, boy. So this got... Blabbermouth article is just all these people uh, sharing their thoughts about his passing. But nothing about anything. Yeah. Oh, wow. fair warning. Don't scroll down to the comments on Blabbermouth. I don't know if you've f frequented that site Going in the past. Going down to but... there, boom. No. <laughs> never, never scroll down. They're just Facebook comments anyway. Oh uh, no, but they're still awful. They're like everyone who comments on Blabbermouth is just an absolute fucking monster. Wayne was scheduled to take a solo band back on the tour for a co-headlining tour with Power Man Five Thousand, starting right? November twenty, <laughs> November sixth, in Waterloo, Iowa. I Welcome would, back to I the would, late nineties. I would like yeah. to see Power Man Five Thousand live. I bet that'd be a pretty interesting show. Yeah, yeah. Yep. it is uh, Rob Zombie's younger brother or stepbrother or something. Somebody related. They to had the, some fun the songs. Zombie family. Oh I yeah. I really liked that one album. I, I thought that yeah. album was was. When worlds collide. Hmm. When worlds collide. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I thought that was entertaining. It's was very it? '90s. It's very '90s new metal, but you know, it's not that bad. Yeah. I've been, of, to, uh, I've been listening to a lot of System of the Down lately. That thing yeah. is amazing. Yeah. They're pretty good. They just couldn't get their shit back together to nope. not be jerks to each other. And uh, lead singer solo stuff is no bueno. Yeah, it's really it's, not. That's it's not fine, but it's not the same. Well, then you've got the uh, guitar player in, uh, God, what was that band? He was basically, he's been in a band with a pedophile. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I, I, Hollywood something, I don't good remember. Good thing he looks like dead. a tattooed child. Uh, maybe? Who, the band that that guy who directed... Uh, Powder. Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. I remember that the other day. Do you guys remember that movie Powder? Yeah, where I, everybody's like, "Oh, that so. that movie was so touching. Oh, it's so sweet." And then it comes out that that guy, the director, was allegedly molesting the the star of that movie, and everybody's like, <laughs> "Shut it down. <laughs> Forget it. Shut it down. Still do nope. shit. What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, abort that movie. We're done. Nobody remembers it. <laughs> nope, it's not a thing. Has anyone seen Birdman yet? No, I no. It is, is it not out? playing anywhere around here. Is it playing anywhere near me? Moviephone.com. Oh, I was th so I was thinking of Scars on Broadway. Actually, I think I was thinking of the Slipknot Drummers one band. Oh, uh, I actually want well, to the see the lead sing the lead singer to uh, to watch call it to uh, Tool is like a dead ringer for Powder anyway. Oh yeah, to uh, bring it all around. Maynard James circle. Keenan, uh, totally. I really want to see. Um, Nightcrawler. Yeah. I, think I that you looks know, really good. Murder Dolls, that's what it was. Murder uh, Dolls. Yeah, and I think it so the Murder Dolls had a, a the guy who used to be in dope in the band and he got put away for something. It was definitely like pedophilia. Release though. date October 17th for Birdman. Mm. Is anywhere showing it near me? No. <laughs> It's driving me bananas. I will catch it on Blu-ray then. There you I go. want to see this movie like something fierce. Like I will go out to Oberlin to watch this movie if it's showing there. Like it is. It just looks hilarious to me. Plus Michael Keaton pulling a Batman voice for the whole thing. Like come on. Gah! Uh, the AMC Studio Thirty is showing it near me in Olathe, Kansas. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fairly close. Yeah. It's kind of close, you know. Let me put my uh, uh, zip that's, code that's in here. slightly less than a day's drive. 232 miles away. Hmm. Oh, no, wait. Uh, 6.4 miles away. It's showing. Oh, God. So to, to tie all of this together, oh, so you've got... Oh, yeah. You've got the, the guitarist from Dope, Static X, the, and the Murder Dolls was uh, uh, charged... They had a sexual assault charges like 10 years... Like Oh, God damn. Oh, wow, nine years ago. 2005 was nine years ago. Wow, well, welcome oh, to the information age. You can't move away from shit. Yeah, yeah. right? Jesus. Also, don't <laughs> touch kids. Yeah. Um, well, pro tip. <laughs> yeah. I think, that's, I think that's a fair deuce. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Wow. 
All right, are we ready to uh, maybe stop talking about all of that and start the show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Maybe I'm> pre- <laughs> Sorry. Just had to relive the new metal days of the early 2000s. Late and 90s. we landed on pedophilia. What the fuck? Naturally. Well, if I, it isn't I'm food, not... apparently it's something horrible. Yeah, oh. that's... Yeah, that's Jesus awesome. Christ. Shut it down. Right, Shut the show down. Bangedup.com. Let's go. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. Welcome to your click hole. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, all right, you gents ready? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> as ready as we're now, going. Now that we got be. that out of our system, so. Yeah. All right, let's get started in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston. Going around the room, we have Knobs. So. And we have the Hannah. Hi. Uh, a couple of announcements here. New episode of Picking Up the Pixels is out now. If you're watching live stream, that's tomorrow. Uh,. Two and a half straight hours of RPGs. It's Sweet. a really long one. Grab a sandwich. We should have done the same for ourselves for recording it. Nice. Um, also, the Hannah and Company recorded a episode for um, TVGP Game Club, The Darkness 2. Yes, we did. So that should be going up uh, probably middle of the week. Yep. This week. Whenever cool. I get around to it. Um, yeah. So don't forget, if you want to uh, catch up on that early, twitch.tv slash E1M1 Network. Business is up there. Nobs, what have you been playing? Oh, My NPR well, voice. Well, well, welcome to uh, to the show tonight. Your um, donations are appreciated. We have this lovely tote. <laughs> become a power member and you donate. Be a recurring member. Be a recurring and, member. <laughs> your donation will outlive you. <laughs> And you'll get this lovely wind-up radio. It lasts and for a, a year on lithium ion batteries. <laughs> and this oh, flask. It was two weeks ago. Or no, it was last week they were doing the fundraiser stuff. Yep. Wow. So I, all that stuff's real fresh in my mind. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, all right. Monday Night Game Night, uh, Battlefield 4. Come on, peeps. You need to show up. I mean... It's just it's dumb. It just gets dumber and dumber Pop every knobs week. Need some uh, need some dog tags. We need we need some some new cackles going in our ears because they are just it it is. It's to the point where we can't even form sentences anymore, <laughs> or it's just something that just gets twisted. So join join the madness on Monday night um, for Battlefield Four on the Xbox One, 10 p.m. EST. Um, besides playing that a couple times throughout here and throughout the week, and was it last week I came to the realization I played 300 hours of Battlefield? I think so, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's horrifying. Well, that has been a ridiculous theme throughout the entire week where they had commented and bragged me on it the entire time. So I had unlocked everything. Wow. And for reasons, I really don't know why. It just, it just had to be done. <laughs> Project Sparks needed to be filled. <laughs> and I filled them. I feel some real good, George. <laughs> uh, anyway, for those who get that joke, good for you. Um, all right, but I have played an absolute crap ton of Shadows of Mordor this week. Oh, that's not really? the game I thought you were going to talk about. Mm. But I will probably talk about the game that you think I'm talking yes. about. But, Yay. Um, but I kind of went through and like I started like I was getting real frustrated with the games. It really wasn't progressing at all, right? It was felt really aimless. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, well I'm gonna just start banging out these story missions and just killing, these killing stupid in. yellow missions. Then I got to the point where I could start attacking war chiefs, and then the game became ridiculously fun oh, for man. me. Yeah. I gotta do that. So. Mm-hmm. Once you start t- tackling war chiefs, once you take down a couple of them, you get your one uh, slick knot or whatever his name is promoted up the war chief, and then you get a chance. Oh, to rat like, bag, rat bag. There yeah, you go. I like that dude. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't end well for rat bag. Um, <laughs> it was never gonna. <laughs> no, no, nope. you can see that one coming. But yeah, um, <laughs> I fight the hand. Of Sor- Sauron or whatever his name is. Yep. Oh. I end up getting him. Then all of a sudden, I get to go to this other like, like Lakey Town thing, hmm. which is like the other half of the game, which is just as big as the section of Mordor you're in. Oh, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, uh, I've heard about that a couple times. So the game literally, literally doubles in size. Awesome. So in there, one of the first missions you get, you unlock branding. 
Now, everyone had talked that I had talked to had played this game and did nothing but talk about the branding mechanic. I've and heard brand, a lot about it. Brand, brand, brand. I didn't realize how my awesome brand. it was until I started using it. And then my random instances in the world became less about killing than just marking fools. Yeah. Like, that was just what it was all about to me, was, was making this army. So what's the breakdown of what branding does? So essentially branding, like you can, uh, dom it's called dominating. Mm -hmm. So you dominate the dude, you get his intel, and then you send him on your way, then he becomes a blue dot. So he's a friendly now. And then if you're in a, in a fight, you can raise your glowy hand of elfish doom and say, come to the light, and then all, all the dudes you summon like slowly converge on your location and start wreaking havoc. Oh, wow. Even though they're nothing but cannon fodder, but they provide just enough distraction for you just to lay waste to everybody. Well, especially because... if you're going to take over one of those strongholds. Like, you just yeah. got a, a bunch of peeps but, now. But this gets way better. All right, so that I mean, that's the base, the bottom line of, of taking care of the branding. Where it becomes really fun is when you unlock the intel from the, the whatever guys, the, the green dots that are on the yeah. map. Yeah. If you get the intel from them, and you, you, un, you start unlocking the war chiefs, and the war chiefs have a certain number of bodyguards. Okay. So... Once the buy, once you locate who the bodyguards are, you mark them, and then you go and brand them, and then tell oh. them to betray the war chief when you go to address them. So I like I went to this one fight where I got where I had all this guy's bodyguards on my side, and I'm just kind of sitting up in the corner. I'm like, <laughs> oh okay, here comes this guy, kicks him off the podium. All right, your soapbox is over. Rise, <laughs> and then everything just <laughs> annihilated the guy to the point where, he, where I can grab him. And I just kind of stroll down there. You're mine, and then I <laughs> then I brand the war chief. Oh wow! The, the other fun thing about branding war chiefs is you can start a riot with another war chief. <laughs> nice. So not only does he bring his cadre of of branded um branded uh what you call it branded guys. And bodyguards with him into the fight, you can brand that one guy so he gets hit on both sides. Jeez. And then you just brand him, and then next thing you know, you, you're taking over the world. And then everyone underneath them becomes marked as well. Oh my god. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it, 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 it became way more fun than I ever thought it would be. It's just trying to hunt these. And I was disappointed when I would accidentally kill one. Yeah. Mm. You know, the it's going to be a real shame if the rumors are true about the last-gen versions of these games. If it doesn't have this, you know, any of this stuff with these War Chiefs or anything, I don't think that's a game I can recommend. Because the, the core game is fine, but it's a lot like, oh, it's, look, it's Gollum, Gollum says Bright Master, and I have to follow him around for five minutes. Yay, the Ugh. mission's over. That was so annoying. Yeah. Gollum's the worst, it, still. Yeah. And I got to kill the Lord of the Rings equivalent of a Rancor in this last mission. So, nice, yeah. with a dwarf that was way too fun to be around. <laughs> he was dwarf just usually fun. Oh, he was great. He was he was a lot of fun. Torvin, I think his name was. <laughs> but he was he was a blast. But uh, finding out this other crazy little side story going on in the Lord of the Rings mythos has been awesome. Yeah. I, I, like, I went through, I found all the relics, listened to all the stupid little stories, and they were all dumb. But it didn't matter. I made my the lithril painting or whatever it's called. Oh, I yeah. finished, I got all those collectibles now. Oh, nice. nice. I'm, I'm, I've been searching those out. And, um, and yeah, like, dude, the shadow mount might be the coolest thing in the world. Shadow if mount? I see, if I see a, a beast running through, I just go pull up my bowl. Think, and then I'm on top of a, a guarg, like just all right. It's, it's on Beast Rider style. In Everything the best about look. this game is so cool. Yep. Like it's, I, I didn't. It's like, like I was enjoying it, and then I started becoming more proficient with the battle with the battle skills. Like there's one like I streamed last night yeah. where um, where I had just unlocked like the the click in the bull sticks, and then I have 20 seconds of unlimited. Execution, execution oh, mode. Is the Doom Rage awesome. mode? <laughs> it is, dude. I probably wrecked maybe 20, 30 dudes Jeez. in like this short little span, and then I found a way to, to, to game the game a little bit with, um, with your, um, 
with a dodge roll move where if you flip over top of them, you do like this little wraith blast on them and it stuns them. Mm -hmm. You can do like a five hit combo, pop their melon, and then with one of the other skills I've up upgraded to the point where I get two executions for every five attacks I land successfully. Ooh. Oh, so wow. I pop this dude, execute two more, hop over another one, pop his melon, execute two, <laughs> rinse and repeat till Just everyone is tornado. dead. And then once I unlock the, or once I build enough death meter to unlock the rage mode, and I just, uh, and everyone's dead. And then all the guy, and I love it when people are running away. Yeah. Especially when captains just come meander into the fight and they start, whoa, this dude just rolled everyone. I'm out of here. I pull out an arrow and I pin him to the ground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this game is so good. Did you did you ever at any point just when you're fighting let off an archer style rampage? <laughs> I, wish, I, I wish I did it did did, did did click my head because I'm I'm grinning from ear to ear when this is going on. God, I gotta play this game more. It is it's so fluid and it's you know it was like before when I was getting in these big battles where I was way outmatched. I was like screw it, I'm Batman. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like Batman. The violence in this game is. so 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 vivid yeah like it's it is um, intense it's amazing just i mean dude i've never popped so many skulls off someone's shoulders in my life yeah. in any other game like this and it's so quick it's like oh stabby 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 poof there goes your bobblehead <laughs> Ping. Like it is <laughs> bananas yeah i don't know darkness 2 would give it a run for its money with the amount <laughs> of executions you pull off in that game I you know I liked like uh, bisecting people more in that game than yeah that. just the what do they call it the uh, wishbone just yeah whoosh. yeah <laughs> just or throw, throw them up and dice them left and right oh and it's, yeah it's a, it's a cool game like I imagine it's how much fun I would have with uh, Metal Gear Solid Rising yeah. oh yeah 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 Revengeers or whatever <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah so I like I have a whole like. I'm all on board. This might be one of the best games I've played in the last few years. Wow! Like, yeah, I am, I am having a ball. I really gotta, I gotta get back on this game uh, before we uh, do our end of the year stuff. Because I feel like if I can get anywhere near the end of this game, I feel like it's a guaranteed top ten. Yeah. Once you, once you hit the second, the back half of that game is where, like, you think you're enjoying it now. When you get to the back half of that game, it gets. All the story missions get flu uh, you know, fleshed out, and you realize the purpose where you're going. And and Kel Kelimimbro, or the the wraith that's with you, mm -hmm. you find out more of his story. And oh man, no wonder he's such a D. Yeah, because, <laughs> because essentially all the things that went wrong are ultimately his fault. Yeah, but it is really good, man. It is really good. Um, yeah, and there were some great characters, and I, I, I laughed for probably two minutes when I ran into one, uh, one captain, and he just screamed in my face. Oh, I've it's run into like that guy. It's just like the scream. Just this, like, howler <laughs> monkey. I paused, I, paused, I paused the game, I'm like, I can't take it. <laughs> it's just, it's so funny, because it's not even, like, a, this short howl, it's... It's like for a solid minute, just like wow, uh, uh, like voice cracking, <laughs> yeah, it's real just, pouring it's out of this man. This wordless howl. Oh, you haven't run across the rhymer yet? No, oh, he's my favorite. He can't rhyme at all. <laughs> he tries so hard and fumbles through it, and it is great. Oh, uh, best game, best game ever. But it's these little things that just seem to make this game way better, and this wasn't even close to being on my radar to looking out, looking forward to playing this year at no, all. I, I mean, I didn't. You know, I think the thing that to me really, really helps it a lot is the same reason why um, Arkham Asylum was so strong is because it wasn't it wasn't a movie tie-in. It's not the the Desol Desolation of Smaug movie. It's right. They're just kind of all right. We got this cool universe. Let's just do something cool with it. You know, same with Arkham Asylum, where it's like, look, we got all this cool Batman stuff. Like, why don't we make a cool game out of it? You know, it's, yeah. you know let's let's stop making, like, the Star Trek, the movie, the game. Let's make something neat. Um, yeah. And I think that's when we get these really great games. 
Well, and that's where that's where the expanded universe plays better than what you what you already know. Yeah. Like I didn't know any of this stuff that yeah. goes on in Lord of the Rings. And apparently all of it makes sense in canon. Yeah. Which which nice. if your story's strong and your gameplay is mildly fun, which they manage a way to make it ridiculously fun. <laughs> like it's I'm sorry, I, just seeing your dog stretching and just Showing his back half to the camera here. <laughs> yeah. Did you get, get a little wink? Yeah. But, <laughs> oh. Well, I think the the other thing, too, is, I mean, I, I kind of like both sides. Like, when you look at Lord of the Rings, if I want a retelling of the movies, I want to play the Lego game. Because at least it's having fun with it. If I, if I don't want that, I want you to do something original. You know, even if yeah. you're just, like, pulling random stuff at a Similarian, like, great, I'm never going to read it. So I don't know who this dude is. But apparently he's in there like everybody else. So that's where I think that's where this game is shined more than anything else for me. Is like I I I enjoy the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I really do. I read the books. I love I I wouldn't say I love them, but I enjoy them. I love the movies. Yeah. But yeah. it's it's this expansion on this universe that this fits right into with everything and it tells a great story. And this guy is is tortured. And I don't know, man. I, I really love it. I mean, I'm having a blast. And and plus, just the game mechanic alone of being able to build an army yeah. has been fantastic. Yeah. And, and just finding ways like, all right, so if I start, if I crash this feast and poison the grog, and then they all start fighting, and I could sneak around and distract them, and I can get this guy to his green skull. Oh, and okay. Pro tip. If you're fighting a... A captain or a war chief, and they're the skull that's over their head above their life bar thing turns green. They're grabbable. Yeah, I had no idea till like way later. It, what, yeah, what the, I figured very, that one out pretty quick. Very early on, that it just like one quick line was like, I don't know, grab him. I was like, what? What? <laughs> but it is awesome when the, when you grab the dude in his face. It, like all the brand is is like a face palm like i like seared into their face wow and then their <laughs> eyes are glowing it's cool it's so cool but when that wraith like pulls off and it's like you'll submit to me You're like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but yeah so i did take a break from playing that to play another game though yes i played some sunset Over overdrive yes Ooh. i want to talk about this game yeah i want to talk All about right. sunset overdrive Let's talk about this. I will sit back and listen. Nobs, how 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 many hours are you into it now? Oh, I only I only took a two hour break from Mordor okay. because I want to wrap that up so I can sink all my efforts into this I'm, because I'm probably six or seven hours through this now. Woo! Mm. It God, it, it is so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whole, it so is. I, I think I think this game has a really big problem at the beginning. Where I think Insomniac wants to make it seem like they're really cool. Like, yeah, we made Ratchet and Clank, but now we can swear in this game. And <laughs> it goes maybe a little too far in probably the first three hours or so. And then mm. almost immediately, they drop all of that and they pull back from it. And the game gets legitimately pretty funny at that point. But at the beginning, it's sort of like... I'm also a kid, right, guys? I like the punk music. That's like I just, mm, just tone it down a little bit. I noticed that like right away with the um, the black dude that's trying to pull off uh, the Samuel Jackson voice the whole time. Yeah, it that voice acting is not good. Everybody else's yeah. voice acting is really good. Just that guy is just something happened, man. <laughs> oh, I don't God. know, but that game eases you into a crazy gameplay style really fast. Uh, really fast. I just fought the, like the first real big boss battle, um, and as a result, I unlocked Air Dash. So Ooh, the no. game has completely. The game is like uh, Gun Valkyrie at this point. Ooh. I mean, it's just so for anybody that hasn't seen anything about Sunset Overdrive, it's this super. So <laughs> I actually really enjoy the story and how they how they opened it up. It's basically this. Fizco, this evil um, energy drink company, released this new drink called Overdrive, and okay. it turned everybody into mutants. Like and you do. Now everybody's trapped in the city. Story over. Um, 
the whole thing about this game, and I, I think the design is really interesting, um, is that you have to keep moving. The, you grind on every rail, you're like bouncing off of cars and um, like piles of tires and awnings and stuff, and you're like wall running and flipping and all. Like, it's so encouraged to keep moving at every point in time yeah. because if you, number one, if you land on the ground, you're dead. Like, the enemies will swarm you, and they will kill you so quickly. Ooh. The other thing, Yeah, too, I found that out the hard way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the game's sort of like, you gotta keep moving. It's like, whatever, I got a gun that launches vinyl records. What are you yeah. gonna do? <laughs> yeah, they killed me. Um, you move so slowly on the ground. Like, mm. it's this night and day sort of thing. Like, the movement, to me, reminds me a lot of um, when you're grinding and you're, you're like... When you're moving on power lines and stuff, it reminds me a lot of um, the best parts of Jet Set Radio. Yeah. Um, you're trying to traverse your way up to some random spot to throw up some graffiti. Yeah, and I mean, the art style of this game really helps. Um, but when you move on the ground, it feels a lot like Jet Set Radio when you would accidentally bump into something. And your character's like doing this horrible, like they get stuck in something. Like it's just, it's so slow. <coughs> Um, excuse me. But this game is, this game is bonkers. Like I don't even. Where do I even start? I don't even. I <laughs> I don't know. I I start with this is the most colorful thing I have ever seen. Yeah. I mean, and that yeah. is crisp. <laughs> I you know the thing that's so exciting for me is I'm a huge Ratchet and Clank fan. Yeah. And Sunset Overdrive to me is kind of. The weapon system is the same as Ratchet and Clank. You have all these weapons and you level them up by using them. Um, what's different here is you have these things called amps, where basically you equip them to a weapon and then they do special stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, like it'll get electric electricity power. Or it'll you can p apply them to your character too, which is another level of insanity. Um, but I, to me, when I look at Ratchet and Clank, and I look at Sunset Overdrive, those are kind of cut from the same cloth. And then when I look at something like Resistance or Fuse, I, I don't want anything to do with those games. Like, those to me are not the the strong Insomniac. Like, that's the kind of... the, the kind of bummer Insomniac. Where, like, you look yeah. at Resistance, it's like, oh, London, or aliens. <laughs> and this game, like... This game... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, I'm, that's why I don't work in, for marketing for Insomniac. I'd just be over there like, oh, do you want to do an interview for a Resistance? Oh, no, London. No, no, oh. No. <laughs> um, but I mean, there's so much, like, there's so much style to it and not kind of in a... You would expect it to be almost like this hipstery, too cool, like, punk, like, D-bag sort of way, but... It kind of makes fun of itself at the same time. Like, one of the early uh, monsters you run into are poppers. And, yeah. <laughs> um, when they explode, this the goop that they have inside them it uh, displays the word pop above them. Like, <laughs> awesome. Oh, a great orange fizzy drink. Like, yeah, it's just like Especially this, if you get a group of them together, then it makes a really big pop. Yeah, it's like, like this it, carbonated, like, pop. And uh, when... In the intro, when you're when the main character is leaving um, this club that they're working at, um, the music says "unts unts unts" behind them, like as they are leaving. Like it's all this That's cool, awesome. it's all this cool stuff, and you can um, you can fully outfit your character in so many insane things. Like you pick basically two sizes of male or female, like kind of short and skinny, or kind of normal size for the female and then kind of a little bigger for the guy and then like super you know brick house dude yeah yeah um and you can outfit them in whatever you want you want to have a lady that has a full beard you can totally do that sweet <laughs> yeah i did the i did a lady's wave hairstyle with the big the big beard yeah um and then a marching band like big fur hat that's like three yeah. feet tall <laughs> like the grand poobah <laughs> yeah it's great the the i have to recommend i've seen a little bit of gameplay for the for the male character i really have to recommend the female character whoever voices her has this amazing like 
poop eating deadpan where it's sort of like <laughs> oh well maybe i'm the one that helped everybody hmm you know it's like this the delivery is really really great oh this game's so good yeah the the guy's delivery is like equally as is over the like melodramatically over the top oh, like man. it's just it's so it's so right on point is it just it's so referential of the ridiculous stuff that's happening and knowing he's in a game yeah yeah because uh, you know there's have you run into um uh not walter but buck national no, not yet. so a little bit of spoilers here for for the beginning for it it's the best way to describe how this game breaks down the fourth wall um Basically, there's this guy, Buck National, who seems to have run a like a reality TV show before everything happened with Overdrive. Um, and you run into him, and he has a gun to your head, and you say, like, well, I have a bunch of guns, too. And on screen, the weapon wheel pulls up as an overlay right next to Buck National's head, and he looks at it and goes, whoa, hell yeah, you do. And I'm just like... What? <laughs> and it's it, like it's that sort of stuff where the game at no point ever takes itself too seriously and i think it it, it that's so much to its strength because no game would like pull up the weapon wheel and they'd be like oh man that's cool this game is more than happy to just be like yeah look at look at this thing you know everybody can see that um <laughs> It's 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 been it's been a riot so yeah. far. Like and I, I've been I've been at parties with with guys that are playing it. I Seven Hundred was playing it and laughing hysterically. Yeah, like I totally forgot. Like I didn't forget, but I was shocked. And you know, like I mean, I've died several times already, but your resurrections are priceless. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Like like I came out of a, of like one of those subterranean drill head things that came up <laughs> yep. and just kicked and somebody kicked me out of it. And then uh, the other one, I came out of a sarcophagus, and I came out with the with the the mummy walk. It was oh my so God, the my ones. Game. I love this game. The good ones that I've gotten. First off, for the fast travel, for anybody listening, you get drunk, you black out, and you wake up where you wanted to go. Yes. <laughs> uh, Real life time cool. travel. Fast, yeah, it's fast. it's so good. The three that I've gotten mm. that I've really liked for the resurrection. One, I got out of the TARDIS from Doctor Who. Oh, um, no. The other one uh, was Portal. You came out of the bottom of the ground in the blue portal. She shot the orange portal above and did a loop and then, like, landed. And then the <laughs> third one, I crawled out of a TV, like, in the ring. And, like, <laughs> she stood up and it, like, she was all staticky. And then she looked up and the static went away and the TV went away. Like, it's just, and apparently there's just dozens of those. That's crazy. Oh, those are great. Oh, it's so those good. Those are all great. I, I, Sunset Overdrive, for me, I was hoping that this was a return to the Insomniac that everybody loves, where it's just, let's have fun, let's have something dumb, let's, let's get just the craziest weapons that get better and get crazier. Like, I just picked up a weapon called the Dude, um and the voiceover says uh that you need to abide um and you just launch bowling balls yeah <laughs> that's it nice <laughs> um very nice it's just the thing that i think is so important about sunset overdrive is you can tell the people making it were having fun and they really loved this game and that that to me is immediately apparent in how much fun this game is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we didn't even talk about the music. So the music is all this this punk music. And the better you do in the game, the more your style meter grows. And the more your style meter grows, the more instruments in the song you're listening to fill in in the background. Nice. So like when you're just walking around the world, it's silent. You you jump on some stuff, you grind on some stuff. There's you know some guitars, some vocals. You hit another level. There's some drums. There's some bass. And at the very highest level, it's the full band, the full song coming in. Very cool. Oh god, it's so good. Sunset yeah. Overdrive. If you have an I Xbox One, wait. you have to get it. I can't wait to to play more of it. I just need to I need to button up. I think I got one loose end I got left to do in Mordor, and then I can shelve it. Yeah. But. 
this game, I mean, I was like, I I literally had to make conscious decisions. Like, look, either I'm going to be here all night. Yeah. Or I'm going to try and finish this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm like, you know, like even like the regular old handguns called the Dirty Harry. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Very nice. But the thing I do like is is more the ease that this game plays for as crazy as the mechanics look. Because it looks like, how in the world can you pull this stuff off? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you, you pretty much just use a crowbar and you're, you know, swinging from stuff. And, I, and it's a lot of the, like, the on-rail shooting stuff that I love is timing up shots as you're going across them. And yep. it's not so much whipping the reticle around and aiming in every which direction. It's been, uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I think it's really interesting too. You know, I, I've been, for some reason, I've been paying attention to the, des to the design of this game a lot more as I've been playing it. Um, but you know, even when they introduce you to grinding and stuff, they don't really. You're not doing it under duress at the very beginning. It's sort mm -hmm. of like, all right, grind around for a while. If you feel cool, we move on to this other stuff. But to grind, you just get near something and you hit X. And yep. you're grinding on it. Like if you hit X again, you're you're hanging you're from hanging. something, or you're you're sort of flipping between over and under. You push another direct, you push backwards and X, and you turn around. And like everything from there, you want to vault over something, just hold A or double tap A. You want to wall run, just hold X while you're running towards it. You want to wall run and wall run around a turn. You just hit X when you're coming up to the turn, and they kind of flip around the corner. Like, it, it, everything looks so cool, but you're not really, you don't have to, like, claw hand this thing. You know, it's it's not this this crazy set of uh, steps you're doing. Right. I mean, it could have been a controlling claw hand nightmare yeah. that you would have had to do to, to perform a lot of this stuff, but they just kept it right on the face buttons. I mean, it's... Like, it's like, even with, like, Shadows of Mordor, like, and that, I keep going back to it because I've had to claw hand that thing several times because yeah. you, like when you're sneaking up on guys early to grab them and you got to hold grab and then hit a every once in a while, like I'd grab it with like the wrong finger and I'd have to reach over my other hand to hit the, hit the button that I wanted to do. Yeah. Like either silent kill brand or, or, or get Intel from them. Yeah. But so far with this, like I'm going to do any of that. Yeah. Man, it's so good. Really looking forward to playing a lot more of this. Yeah. We'll be talking about this one for a few weeks. Yeah. 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 That's good to hear. Well, and I, I really want to collect everything in the world because not only do you get the more stuff... So the collectibles are like fizzy uh, balloons. Fizzy is the um, the foul-mouthed uh, mascot for Fizco. Uh, toilet paper hanging from uh, street lamps. Mm. Uh, sneakers hanging from lines. Yeah, yeah. sneakers nice. hanging from power lines, um, security cameras. And I think there's one more. Oh, uh, neon signs. Um you can get so the the currency in the game are empty overdrive cans um and f only for like 2500 uh cans which is not a lot um you can get icons on your map like this dude Ooh. just sells them from the beginning of the game like they are more than willing to help you collect that stuff because the more of those you collect you use collectibles as currency for amps for your character nice um so it's even stuff like if you do a super bounce on something that's bouncy, this whole torrent of fireballs explode out of it. You know, so it's it's pretty powerful stuff. So I I kind of want to collect all that stuff. Well, I can't wait to see what the Ratchet and Clank guys do with the the upgrades and the weapons. Because if it's anything like it was in Ratchet and Clank, I can't wait. Yeah. Oh, man. Because those those guns became some of the most fun weapons I've ever used. Yep. Yeah, even the Ratchet disco ball. guns were just awesome. <laughs> yeah. But that's pretty much it. I think I maybe played Power Star Golf in there somewhere, but nah. Yeah. All right, Hannah, what about you? Um, well, as usual, I've been playing way too much Diablo 3. Mm. Uh, I'm, like, I'm really close to Paragon 50. Nice. Which is really nice. Um, I've been having a ton of trouble with my remote play this week after the 2.0 update. Mm. Uh, I don't know if it's related to that or related to the fact that um, Comcast yet again sent a bad configuration file to my router. Lucky uh, you. Yeah, this is like the second time this has happened. So basically what I have to do is I have to go in and take a, uh, a literal screenshot of my Wi-Fi settings mm. and then frag the entire thing 
and re- you know reset it to factory settings and then reset everything back up exactly as it was because there's no way to just get rid of the bad configuration file. I'm I think I'm going to call this week and just cancel like a bunch of stuff with them because I don't need my phone. I don't need their TV anymore. Yeah. Uh, and I I'm just going to be like, look, I'm getting rid of your equipment. I don't want your equipment. It's it's too closed off. I'm sick and tired of dealing with it. Yeah. Uh, I would really like to have um, a dual band router as well, which this thing is not. Yeah. Uh, but just like I can't keep, I'll, I'm 20 feet from my PS3 or from my PS4, and I can't keep a direct connection. Yeah. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a networking guy, but if let's say someone's watching Netflix and I'm trying to, you know, uh, play direct, you know, play remote play direct connected to my PS4. That should work, right? Like, there shouldn't be any network congestion issues with that. No, no not unless you're using the Wi-Fi. You know, I, I I'm s- not. <laughs> like, I still I think know there's I'm something not. weird with the Vita where I think sometimes it will either have trouble doing a direct connect or just kind mm-hmm. of give up on direct connect and just use Wi-Fi without telling you. Yeah, I think it does, and yeah. that's the only that's the only thing I can figure out. Like, and I I would I think I might just force my Vita to forget my. Uh, you might just want uh, to turn it I, into airplane mode. Yeah, that's the only. That's probably the the best way to do it. But it's, it's still driving me crazy because yeah. I just I just wanna I just wanna watch Criminal Minds with my wife and play some Diablo while I ignore the Is that show. Too much to ask. <laughs> Is that too much to ask? <laughs> no, I look up every five minutes and go, "Oh, they got him. Cool. Oh, good job. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you next. Good week. job. Good job, Andy Patank. Good job. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so, you know, just playing some Diablo. Um, so I, I didn't play a ton this week, I, you know, mostly because of the remote play thing and partially because it was just a really busy week for me at work. Uh, I played a couple rounds of the Evolve Big Alpha. Mm. And I'm, I think I need to throw in the towel on any sort of multiplayer shooter. Uh, I'm terrible at these games. <laughs> I'm genuinely I awful at this game. I appreciate your honesty. Yeah, I'm not good at them. Um, but at the same time, I'm also kind of really not happy with the way they present the game. They literally just go, all right, here you go. They just throw you in and go, here, play. Yeah. Multiplayer with absolutely no introduction to any sort of tactics. There's no, like, broad overview of, like, hey, this is – I didn't even know I had a jetpack on. Oh, yeah. I had no clue until I held down the button. I was like, oh, I seem to be fl- – okay, apparently I have a jet. There's – there's nothing. There's like the tips on the loading screen, and that's it. Yeah, it's kind of surprising because I. Uh, so, for people that don't know, this is made by the same uh, team who made um, Left 4 Dead. Yeah. Um, it, it seems like they don't necessarily realize that people haven't played the single player, if there is one. Yeah. Um, or they haven't played like the tutorial training mode because that seems to be a pretty popular like and I, like it's not even in there so yeah. I, I think it's one of those things where the team may have been playing it for so long themselves where they're like oh yeah you know you just it's the monster and you're trapping it and you're doing all this stuff and you're leveling up evolve yay and yeah. sort of like N- i don't know what to do and i got like a small introduction to uh, so i played um assault Mm-hmm. mostly. I played a couple rounds as Assault, and that's the easiest class, because literally it's just like, okay, find the thing and kill it. Yeah, that's easy. Shoot I, can under- I can understand that. Well, then I jump into a game, and I'm the... I, th- I thought I was the Trapper. I was not. I was the Medic. Mm. Uh, and so I'm playing the game, and I'm sitting there, and they're like, oh man, I didn't get healed once this game. I was like, I was alive for a total grand total of 30 seconds. Yeah. This whole game. <laughs> I, I spawned in I, I switch to my, my heal gun, and the monster just wrecks me. I could not medic. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I, I literally could not medic. Um, and then I spawn back in, and I'm unlucky enough to be... Because the way you spawn in is you literally come out of a drop ship. Yeah. And it's really cool, except when you're dropping, and you just see the monster coming into view, and you're like, I'm going to like land right underneath this thing. <laughs> and then you do, and you die. You know, this this game, I, I was watching a little bit of it on Giant Bomb. Yeah. This looks like... It looks very much like the the way that we enjoyed Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, where we had a solid group of people, and all yeah. of us were kind of... Not necessarily at the same skill mm-hmm. level, but we weren't going to get upset when somebody went down. 
You know, we were yeah. going to get upset when the enemy team had a really good run and just rolled us. Yeah. It seems like if you have five people together, it would probably be the the best way to play that. Yes, and well, I would love to get online with it if they do like a beta or something and get online with some actual people, but my time this weekend was so sporadic, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to hop in with randoms. Yeah, and now I well, think the alpha's over. Yeah, so... And that's and that's the same complaints that I heard from uh, from Scott and, uh, and Moonpeer. I think even Seven was playing, maybe Tom, I don't remember. A group of them were playing it together, and they were, seemed to be moments of brilliance that they had trying to figure out how to beat the game yeah. Yeah. or how to game the systems. But without knowing what they were doing, they, it was just it kind of sounded like to me, at least I was playing Mordor, yeah. um, I was, it sounded like they kept running into brick walls. And I think mm -hmm. maybe the judgment on this, on this side is a little too harsh at this point. But, but yeah, no, definitely. But I'm this is, really... This is I, 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 I know this is going to be a game on by sight unseen. Yeah, I just know. Yeah, I would play like if I had a regular group of people and enough time in a given week to play it on a regular basis. I feel like I would enjoy it, but I don't have that. I don't have like a set amount of time where I can sit down and play like a multiplayer game mm -hmm. with voice chat and all of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, if I had that, I'm sure I would enjoy the game. My my major screed against this game is just the general population of players that are just like, oh, you don't know exactly what you're doing at all times yeah, with every single class, class. For this for this three day alpha, get out. Well it's funny because get out, you suck, you're horrible, and just just leave because you're not worthy to play this game. Like that attitude I like the fact that that attitude still exists and yeah. we haven't made a valid attempt to flush it out just infuriates me. Well the on the giant bomb um stream as the second that someone went down they just yeah. jumped out of the game like yeah. they immediately disconnected it's like well That's, can you give no. someone a second to like try and res you or something like are you looking for the perfect speed run through evolve like what's what's happening <laughs> yeah like and i have to i have to admit the first my first run through as assault i had a good time with that game i didn't really know what i was doing i was sort of figuring it out as i went um, but we got to a point that uh, the group of people I was with, we were playing, um, We like I played it from the beginning. Most of the matches I jumped in in the middle and had no idea what I was doing. But this was one of the few where I played straight from the beginning. And so, you know, chasing the monster, it disappears, it evolves, it hits stage two. And you're like, oh, crap, all right, got to take this down. And they were throwing down the mobile arena. Um, they were tranking it. They were tracking it fairly well. Nice. And I would get close enough to it and bust out the lightning gun that the assault has and just you know, take take down its shields, do a bunch of damage. It actually got, we got to the end, and it started attacking the power relay because it got to stage three, and it was like, it had one, like, uh, bar of health left, and if I hadn't died, I think we could have taken it. Yeah. Uh, it was a, like, and that round, that round, I, I will hold on to that because that was a lot of fun. It was really cool. Every other round I jumped in, it was just like, I, I, like the game was either 30 seconds left on it or I died every two seconds. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it has potential, and I'm right Absolutely. now like I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of eh, not on the fence, but I'm I'm mildly nervous after hearing their experiences right now. Yeah. Well, it's not coming out till February, so they've got some time. It's just good that they're doing something big like this early to test the servers out. I didn't have one issue with servers. Oh, nice. I will say that. Uh, really? Because they yeah. had we had, they were having troubles connecting to anybody. I was so I was on PC, so I'm probably oh, a completely okay. different set of servers. Um, but the PC version, it looks fantastic. I've heard the, the Xbox One version actually looks really solid too. Yeah, uh, we don't know about the PS4 version. Uh, regrettably, we do not. So yeah, it got delayed because they're having problems with the 2.0 firmware. I don't yeah. understand what happened, but. I don't either, and like the stuff that's coming out with the firmware is like I, I had an issue earlier. My uh, PS4 automatically went into uh, standby mode, which is now known as rest mode, yeah. and it wouldn't turn back on. Yeah, I had that happen to me twice over the last couple so days. I just I completely turned off any sort of automatic turn off on my PS4 for now. Yeah, because I don't want to deal resolve with that. it. Don't worry. Oh really? Yeah. It just goes yeah. into rest mode automatically? No, if you put it into rest mode, either automatically or manually, it will. Oh not no no fix no! It. I, like so, I will just. I'm just going to leave my PS4 on until it's fixed. Ah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> 
So Well, there's an easy workaround for if it gets stuck in rest mode. You just What's hold that? the power button until it turns off and turn it back on, and it's fine. Oh, okay. I didn't know you could hold the power button down. Yeah, you have to hold it for, like, 15 seconds. Like, it's way longer than you would expect it to be. Yeah. Um, but it will turn off, and it will um, it'll do that whole, like, hey, I'm going to check the file system, and yeah. then turn back on just fine. Like, I don't know if I'm doing permanent harm or not, but... I guess I still have a warranty, probably. Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm just going to turn it off and not use rust mode at all. Yeah. Uh, so I, I didn't play, like I said, I didn't play a lot this week, but I had the whole morning to play stuff today. So I just decided to go through my Steam list of stuff I've installed recently, meaning to play, and just play a few things. Okay. Uh, so I played a bunch of Crypt of the Necrodancer. Yeah, I need to buy that. That game is super awesome. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know what it is, it's basically a roguelike dungeon crawling rhythm game. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. So you're sitting there, there's no, uh, there's not really an attack button, there's not really a move button, they're sort of combined into the same thing. Um, the whole point of the game is that you, you move your character and attack enemies to the beat of the background music. Uh, and you, while you're doing that, if you keep within the beat your gold multiplier uh, goes up. So every time you kill a monster, you get more gold. Uh, you can collect, like, diamonds uh, to unlock new stuff uh, in, like, the main hub where you pick, like, your levels and stuff. And as you go, you also get weapons. So if you pick up the broadsword, instead of just attacking the square right in front of you, you attack uh, three squares in front of you. So you attack the square in front of you, the square above that, and the square below that, or depending on what way you're facing, you know, left and right of it. Uh, you can also pick up spears that attack one, uh, like two squares ahead of you. So if there's an enemy, you know, there's empty square and then an enemy, you can attack that way. Uh, it's really cool. I would really love to see this on the Vita because it's that perfect bite-sized chunk for mobile games. Yeah, I I, I thought it, they were going to come out with it on the PlayStation platforms soon. Mm -hmm. I'll look it up while we're talking about it. Yeah, uh, that that game is really, really cool. Uh, it doesn't just give you the audio cue either. It also gives you a visual. Uh, so the the tiles of the dungeon actually change with the beat. And if you've got if you've killed enough enemies in a row, uh, at first it's just this subtle change of like, oh, the ground is a little bit lighter here, and it'll alternate between it um, like a checkerboard. Uh, but if you if you get like a couple enemies in a row, it starts flashing purple and green. It's basically like a disco dance floor. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's really cool because that allows you to play it without having to have the music on. Uh, so, like, if I were playing it on the Vita, it would, you know, be completely viable for me to, you know, turn that all the way down and just play it visually instead of having to rely entirely on the music, which is a really neat approach. Um, I didn't do very well at this game. Uh, it's sort of difficult. With, I, I think I just need a different keyboard because it's sort of hard to keep the... Uh, uh, the rhythm going with it, but yeah. man, it's just such a cool concept, and it's such an interesting take on that like set of genres that I I a, a Vita version would like I would buy it like without question. Ever. Yeah. Um. So, uh, looking at their website here, they're saying that um, once the game is out of early access, then they're mm -hmm. gonna look at. If it's doing well, they'll look at porting it to other platforms. Okay, so everybody go buy this game. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, on sale right now. Uh, yeah. Usually $15. It's less than 10 Yeah, do it up. It's fantastic. It's totally worth it. The other thing I forgot is it actually on PC supports dance pads. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if you have like a, a, a DDR pad or anything one. That, that plugs in, you can actually play it with that. I've got an old DDR pad around here too. I think I've got the what? PS2 yeah. to USB converter to, for it too. Ooh, I might have to do that. Yeah, it's crazy. That's fantastic. Yeah, uh, I played a little bit of Typing of the Dead Overkill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I love Typing of the Dead. The original's just the best. Yeah, it's still um, really good. I, mean, I don't know. I've been feeling, feeling a little sluggish on the keyboard lately, so I'm like, all right, I'll play a little bit of that. Yeah, brush uh, up. So I, I, I decided to explore the options before kicking it off, and oh, apparently there are a bunch of DLC packs for yep. the uh, uh, dictionaries. Yep. So I clicked on the sci-fi one, and that's like turning on hard mode. Mm -hmm. Like I'm pretty sure sci-fi authors just go, okay, Zs, 
X's and Y's where there should be I's. Let's just and mix all those in there. Yeah, and apostrophes <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. Uh, dashes where there probably shouldn't be them. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a little loose on standards. Like you don't have to actually hit the capital letter. You don't have to uh, necessarily get the punctuation perfect. Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's almost a little too lenient in my opinion. But I understand why they're not as lenient. I think hardcore mode probably makes it a little more difficult. Yeah. Um, but I, like I said, I only played like 20, 30 minutes of it. That ca- the cutscenes in that game are ridiculous. They kept the terrible like acting of House of the Dead mm-hmm. completely intact, and they just put a grain filter over it and made it, you know, grind house. Yeah, because they, they basically took House of the Dead overkill with its like mm-hmm. 70s exploitation uh, motif and just put Typing of the Dead over top of that yeah and it's uh yeah the game's it's really funny yeah you should just... probably check out the i don't remember what they call it i think they call it the filthy pack where oh <laughs> there is a high chance of getting a lot of sentences that include vivid descriptions of anatomical acts oh jesus <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be that would be appropriate for the strip club uh, yes. level. Very appropriate for the strip club level. Uh, yeah, just the bosses just are swipe really your gold nice. card here. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, so I played a little bit of that, and the last thing I played this week was Octodad Dadliest Catch. Yeah. Uh, which I don't know how to feel about that game because <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Really, it's really funny. Yeah. Uh, but it's also entirely insane. Uh, so I know people have sort of described like it's it's uh, like that weird like quap kind of movement. Yeah. Um, it's a little better than that. So you you can control the, his legs and his arms, but not at the same time. Okay. So you control his legs by clicking uh, either left or right on your on your mouse and clicking and dragging. And it'll move the leg that you've selected, um, and you can uh, hit the middle mouse button, and it'll switch to his arms, uh, and you can move his arms around uh, sort of the same way, but you have to uh, scroll your mouse wheel up to move the hand up vertically, so it'll be like here, and like you have to bring it up this way to get something that's a little bit higher. Right. Um, that it's really frustrating. Like, I, I love the fact that they keep you to just simple tasks. Yeah. Like, one of the first things you have to do is just yard work. Just go get the lawnmower and mow the lawn. Yeah. And just go pull weeds and but maybe grill impossible. some burgers and serve them. Yeah. Go pour a glass of, da- of, of, uh, go pour a glass of milk for your daughter. Yeah. That's literally impossible. <laughs> I, you it, like, and you're like hitting her with the milk jug and yeah. just like. <laughs> My favorite thing about Octodad is. The whole conceit of the game is nobody knows you're an octopus. Mm-hmm. They just know you're their dad. You yeah. have to keep it together. Nobody can find out. Yes. <laughs> so like the main And you're not keeping it together in any manner, no. shape, or form. And like the only thing on the on the screen really is like you're keeping it together bar. It's like how many people suspect you're a giant octopus in a suit? Yeah. That's really the only thing about the game. Well, the opening the opening of that game is you like it's your wedding yeah. and the guy comes one of the guys comes to get you and is like <gasps> and he's super shocked and his reaction is you're not even dressed yet <laughs> yeah it's not <laughs> not oh my god you're an octopus dressed as a man yeah. no you didn't put your tux on yet <laughs> it's just it's so dumb in the best way it really is uh but that's pretty much all i've been playing this week uh we're gonna talk about sunset overdrive which is the thing i've spent the majority of my time with um, I picked up um, Costume Quest 2 for the PlayStation 4 this week. Nice. No, it's not. Oh, oh really? Please do not buy this on the PS4. The frame rate is atrocious. It <laughs> is oftentimes sub-20. Like when you're just walking around town. Wow. Um, I that's good. Don't that's understand. a graphical juggernaut. <laughs> uh, like, that's the thing. Like, I don't understand what happened because it ran fine on the 360. It looks fairly similar to the old engine on this one. And it is just... The battles are fine. Like, everything is smooth there. Um, it's just when you're actually walking around town and, like, knocking on doors and doing quests mm-hmm. that it is just... 
it is not good. Like, I spent 16 bucks on this game. Like, it, it's... I would very much like a patch so that something could <laughs> run appropriately because... Like your character? Like, well, I think... Oh. I think this game... If 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 you're going to pick it up on PC, it's probably fine. I could recommend it just as much as I can recommend the first one. Okay. If they will patch it on PS4, I could easily recommend it. At this point, it's a really great game that kind of gives me a really nasty headache when I try and play it. So, mm. super huge bummer. That was um, a bummer. I've been playing more Destiny. I'm not really going to talk more about that because I'm still doing the same stuff that I'm doing. Yeah, Destiny! So I've had a really strong urge to pick that up lately, and yes. I'm trying to resist it. No. Uh, should I? Yes! I, don't know, I, I think no, I might you know look what? for a cheap copy on eBay or something. I don't know. Like, How do you feel about, how do you feel about the DLC? Is probably the, the question I would ask you. Um, let's say if I okay, here's my my thought on it. I, I, if I don't pay more than like thirty five for the game, I'm kind of okay with paying for the DLC. Okay, that seems fair. Uh, that's like I waited on it because I didn't want to pay sixty four because I knew about the DLC plans and yeah. I didn't want to. But I really enjoyed my time with it, and I've heard remote play on it for the PS4 is really good. It's supposed to be really really great. So like, and I want another remote play game besides Diablo that I can sink my teeth into. Yeah. Uh, and I was hoping Shadow of Mordor would eventually get patched, but it does not look like that's happening. Well, over on Destiny, we got this big old clan you can join. We got a bunch oh, of peeps, people running so through the tempting. raid. Oh yeah, all these strikes and stuff. Oh man! All right, all right. We'll see what I can find on eBay yeah. or Craigslist this week. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, since I couldn't really play Costume Quest Two, I figured, why don't I play Dust and Illusion Tale? Because um, I've never actually finished that game. Got all the way to the ending last time and never yeah. actually fought the last boss. Um, that game is still really outstanding. Um, I am skipping the majority of the text because the second time around, it's not the best. Um, mm -hmm. But pretty quickly, you get out of, you know, fidget squawking at you all the time. Um, and it just lets you loose in the world. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at now. I've probably played, I don't know, two hours, three hours at most, maybe. Um, every piece of text in that game is too small. Yeah. Oh my I god. I agree with that. Imagine reading it on a Vita. <laughs> no, impossible. <laughs> I, I just, like... Might as well be a different language. I have yeah. to, I'm, I now, if I would like to keep, continue playing it, I have to pull a chair up nearer to my TV so that I can see that text. It's just <laughs> too small. Yeah. I'm a 33-year-old man with not great eyesight. I cannot see everything that tiny. Yeah. Oh. Um, and the last game I played a little bit of was um, Forza Horizon 2. Um, I completed a whole other area. I went to somewhere else in Italy, I think. Um, and someone sent me a text on Xbox Live um, so, I don't remember who, I'm very sorry, um, saying, hey, you should make a clan for TVGP. Um, uh, you have to unlock it, though. I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I don't think I have that unlocked. I'm very sorry. Hmm. Hopefully at some point I will. I don't, I can't, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't. Okay. Someone, uh, I think it was, um, I don't know who he is on the forums, but uh, his, he has the best PSN username ever, Troy and Abed in AM. Yes. Um, sent me a message on PS4 while I was playing Diablo today, like, so when should I start worrying about your Diablo addiction? I'm just like, you're, you're way too late. Yeah, it's, it, that's already. I'm too far gone. That ship has sailed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then, hey, we all have our crosses to bear. It's true. <laughs> Uh, and that's all I've really been playing this week, so let's take a break. Sounds good. I'm going to eat some pretzels. I'm going to get some mm. water, because oh. I almost choked to death on a cough last segment. Wow. Oh, that was terrible. I guess Hear I'm going to close this window, because it is 40 degrees outside.
What's up, Sam? Uh, D voice in chat asks, um, excuse me, uh, have you guys tried the new Smash yet? No. Nope. I'm not really the biggest Smash fan. I don't have enough people around here that would want to play it. My brother will probably pick it up. I'll probably end up playing it. Yeah. I would love to try an eight-player Smash though. That sounds like a ton of fun. Yeah, that that sounds like the time we we did um, eight-player Mario Party Four. I think it was. Oh, that's nuts. I did a 16-man um, Mario Kart um, Double Dash one time. Oh, boy. Yeah, that is chaos incarnate. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just hear you crunching. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So hungry. Mm-hmm. We kind of eat donuts all day. Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah, I could go for donut, man. I had some, I had some taco hell for lunch. Oh man, I haven't had that in yeah. so long, and I just, I have to get it soon. Yeah, it's one of those like every once in a while you just sit there and go, you know, I need to go somewhere that's gonna feed me an obscene amount of food for like eight bucks. Where can I go around here? I, I have two options. I can go to White Castle or I can go to Taco Bell, and they are Whoa. literally right. They are literally get, right next get to both. each other. Get a little bit oh. of both. I, so and you know what? I'm gonna it, is show a up. it is a viable <laughs> option. Yeah. I'm going to show up at your house with two Crave cases. Let's go after it. Um, I, I don't know if they still have it around here, but for a while they had the Crave Crate, which is just oh. 100 sliders. Oh, no. What? Yeah. Oh. You got to call that in ahead of time. You can't pull, th pull that shenanigans on the drive through I, I have seen people pull through the drive through and walk away with one of those. That's oh. Nice. So See, like they is, obviously they don't keep them in the drive through. They're like, okay, go park over there for ten minutes. Yeah. See, the sad part is I know exactly what I'll get when I go to Taco Bell. Yeah. I will get a a chicken grilled stuffed burrito. Ooh. And I will get a um, cheesy gordita crunch. Okay. I get the uh, the steak quesadilla. Ooh. Uh, with a soft shell taco. Oh yeah. And the uh, beef and potato burrito, no sour cream. Ooh. Yeah. That's a combo, it's son. It is literally a burrito. It's just a, a beef burrito so with tater tots in it. Oh, my God. That's all it is. Oh, and the one by me recently started carrying, um, uh, there's this apple-flavored soda called uh, Manzanita del Sol that I used to have tons of trouble find, finding. Like, you couldn't find it in any store except in, like, the, like, super Mexican neighborhoods of Chicago. So I would just drive out and try and get it because it's delicious. And they started carrying it in their fountains. Oh, no. I, I loaded up TacoBell.com, and the first thing that shows is, mobile ordering is here. Download the app. Yeah. Fucking monsters. Yeah, they <laughs> are monsters. And, they try the, and they've been in, I believe they've been instructed to tell you about it when you go through the drive-thru. No, no. Yeah. I, I don't know. know. Doritos I, Cheesy Gordita Crunch. What? If I have to That's see another thing? Taco Bell, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> I've had the worst job of my entire career at this Taco Bell. Oh, oh really? Oh, that sounds awful. And it's in Warren, Boston. It's in Warren, so I have to there. I have to drive out. There. I've been out there. I probably put on at least seven eight hundred miles a week, <laughs> driving wow. back and forth in that nightmare of a place. Uh, nope, 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 nope. All right, before I get even more hungry, let's knock out this next segment. Uh, let me open up show notes here. Oh, cool. They're already open. Excellent. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> One moment. I got it open. If I can see it. Oh, no. What's next week's date? The 10th? 11... 10 because I think I accidentally wrote a check for 111 instead of 11 uh one. -oh. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, we need. Um, I'm getting married in three weeks. Ooh. The the weekend that I get married, we'll have to do a mailbag episode, so we'll have to figure out something to do before that. Okay, cool. I'll mention it at the end of the show here. I totally forgot about that. It's the 23rd, is okay when we'll we'll take a break. Yeah. And then once I get back, we need to start planning for the Christmas episodes. Okay. Oh, God. 
Mm-hmm. Oh god, yes, so much. Sir. Start thinking about that now, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Because this yeah. time next month we'll probably be recording them. <laughs> I'll. You know what? I'm gonna be 100 percent honest. I do not know if I have enough games from this year to do a top ten. That's okay. I do uh, a I'm top sure do. top uh, number that is less than ten is okay. Fair top enough. what you played. Yeah, yeah. like I, cause I was hoping you know if Watch Dogs hadn't been terrible. So that's not going on any list for me this year. Yeah. Well, and we don't do um, disappointments anymore either. Yeah, so. Even though I would have one big one. Yeah. I can't wait for the predictions episode. I always love that. Yeah. We'll have to, um, I'll start looking at our schedule and see when um, when we can start scheduling the um, those two episodes. We might do, yeah. I might try and schedule us some early Saturdays. Okay. Um, for us to do that stuff. Yeah. All right, yeah, keep me in the loop because I'm not going to be golfing, so. Perfect. Even better. All righty. All right. You ready? Yep. Yep. All right, ready in three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody. We got releases. Yay. Yay. Ready. This week for the week of October, no, nope. November 10th, uh, 2014, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare for the PS3, PS4, 360, XBO, and PC. <gasps> I know virtually nothing about that game. Kevin Spacey. Yes. That's all, okay. So, now I know one thing about that game, and I know it has mechs somewhere. Mm-hmm. So out of every any Call of Duty game I think I've ever been curious about, this one has me a little interested. Yeah, yeah same here. Has a little interested. What what mm-hmm. what's what's drawn you to to this one? The enhanced uh, mobility and and like futuristic futuristic weapons. Oh, they're they're not just going. All right, this stuff all exists. Let's uh, just like take some scans of it, put it in the game, and uh, call it a day. Yeah, it's like I they're mean, actually going in a creative direction with it. Huh? Well, and Ke- and Kevin Spacey. And Kevin, Sp- and Kevin Spacey is awesome. And that trailer with Kevin Spacey really sold it too. Like yeah. this one might actually be fun to play. You might it might have something rewarding by playing through a three hour single player thing. I'm looking forward to hear uh, both of your impressions on this. That's I'm very interested. Yeah, I'll well, oh. see if I even play it. <laughs> well, I probably will. Yeah. I'm just I'm not gonna pick up day one. I can tell you that right now. Sunset Overdrive has my my Xbox One claimed yep. for right now. Nice. All right, uh, the Blinding of Isaac Rebirth. The bind bi- bidding binding 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 binding. Did I say blinding? Yes, Maybe you did. I don't know. All right. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, the <laughs> PS4, <laughs> PlayStation Vita, and PC. I cannot wait for this game. I loved yeah. the first Binding of Isaac, and being able to play it with a controller for real. Oh, man. This game is so good. Yeah, for and serious. so the interesting thing is the PS4 and PS Vita versions are both uh, Game Club, or not Game, wow, I wish they were Game Club, uh, <laughs> PlayStation Plus, yep. but they're not cross-buy? Interesting. So yeah, pick up both so I don't know how, yeah, I don't know how they're handling that. Weird. Yeah. All right, and Rocksmith 2014 edition for PS4 and XBO. I've always heard really great things about those games, like legitimately really great. Um, yeah, but, it will teach you to play guitar. Yeah, and if you already play guitar, it will make you better. Like, yeah. actually. Uh, speaking of November's PS Plus and games for gold games... Uh, list of stuff we got coming up this month. PS4, The Binding of Isaac, Rebirth, and Steam World Dig. Mm-hmm. Please try Steam World Dig. It's really, really, really good, and I feel like nobody has been playing it. Mm-hmm. And now it's free. So yeah. go try that. Uh, for PS3, Frozen Synapse Prime and Luftrausers. Uh, Luftrausers. Both of those games are really good. Uh, Frozen Synapse, I am terrible at. So, yeah. but it yeah, is super here. cool. Uh, for the Vita, the Hungry Horde and Escape Plan. Um, mm-hmm. Don't know much about Hungry Horde. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I've been seeing a lot of uh, weird stuff going with these games that they announced for PlayStation Plus because Sony announced these games real early. Yeah, this is way like early, and then they. Ago. Well, and then they suddenly started pulling all information for all these games off of all of their their sites. Weird. So I don't know if, like, these are probably the games, but, like, who knows what might have happened. They're probably just trying to be like, oh, no, we're not going to announce them early like this anymore for some reason. Uh, For the Xbox One, Volgar the Viking, uh, that super cool Genesis-era beat-em-up game. 
Nice. And Xbox 360, two games that if you have not played them, you absolutely need to. Viva Pinata, Trouble in Paradise, one of the best games for the 360. Hands nice. down. And the other best game, Red Faction Gorilla. Gorilla. Oh my god, <laughs> go play this game. Yes. It's a nano rifle. It's free. <laughs> ah, so many great oh. games this month for free. Speaking yeah. of games, speaking of games with gold, so fortuitously after last week's title of Settle Down Brawly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, so I bought another Dragon Ball Z game. Oh, you must. Oh, no. Battle Z, so I missed that what you were playing. That game is hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. All right, next news story, Drive Club PS Plus Edition delayed until the full game gets uh, its problems resolved. Um, mm. We haven't really been talking about Drive Club because I, I felt like it was kind of insult to injury for evolution. Yeah. Um, but actually, uh, Sony Worldwide Studios president Shuhei Yoshida issued an update on the game's Facebook page. So the dude who runs Sony uh, on the video game side took to Facebook to say, quote, we have been listening to your feedback and realize that patience understandably is running out. Evo is working around the clock to close the gap, and we've de- uh, deployed additional engineering resources to help resolve the remaining issues as soon as possible. Uh, end quote. Um, he says a whole bunch of other stuff that's basically like, yeah, we know the game's messed up. You guys don't get the PS Plus version for free until we sort all this stuff out. That's crazy. This is, unfortunately for Evolution probably one of the worst launches we've seen in a a good long time and this is also probably their last game and that to me is you know i've heard from so many people that have had the multiplayer work and from uh so many reviewers that when it when the multiplayer stuff works it makes the game way better because you're connected to all this cool stuff you have your drive club you have all these people that are sort of that um the you know the the co-op competition, com- the co-op competition sort of stuff. Like, apparently, it ties it all together, and something happened. You know, Evolution. I'm kind of impressed by because they've they came out pretty early and said, like, look, we had a bug in our server code. Mm-hmm. It's not a load thing. It's not a server, you know, a problem. It's just something in our code is causing us issues. Um, and it's just, it's been out for a couple weeks now, and apparently the online is still basically non-functional. That's, that sucks. So I, I really feel for those dudes, and I was really looking forward to the PS Plus version to to see if it's a really solid racing game. Um, <laughs> but I, of course, haven't had the chance to do so. So, yeah. best of luck to Evolution, because, I, I mean, I have been through bad uh uh, code launches myself. Yeah, uh, they're no fun. <laughs> but millions of people haven't paid for our product, uh, so I can only imagine the level of stress that they are under right now. Well, yeah. it sounds like they're just throwing people at it, which is not necessarily the best thing to be doing. Right, and it's not gonna like just having more people working on it. Like, you, it's not gonna necessarily solve the problem. Like, I think they need to bring in like a specific skill set. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you'd also need to bring in somebody who's intimately familiar with your code base. So maybe just train one of your dudes on what needs to be fixed. Yeah. Just pump them full of Red Bull. And and networking code. (laughs) (laughs) Um, our next news story is a little interesting. Uh, we haven't talked about dying light that much. Um, I, I think it, it hasn't been a game that is really in our wheelhouse, um, the more I hear about it, the more I'm kind of interested in it. Um, but the developer Techland um, actually announced that they canceled the Xbox 360 and PS3 versions. Um, mm. So all we're getting is uh, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Um, I thought it was really interesting because they said, like, hey, the game we made now just won't run on those older consoles. Like, we're not going to put out a game and try and get your money when it it runs poorly like their direct quote is quote older consoles just couldn't run the game and stay true to a core vision end quote so i kind of give them a lot of credit for saying like 
because they could have put this game out and gotten, you know, probably a, a million more copies sold um, just through the sheer numbers that are uh, available on those platforms. But they're like, yeah, you know what? It kind of runs like crap. So it's canceled. See but what, I mean, would that it probably the math? Would it be worth getting blasted in the media over a subpar, lower standard game for those consoles versus, right. versus putting out a premium product? So yeah, yeah, exactly. It's probably a good move on their part. Yeah, oh, it definitely is, and it's nice to see a studio take a stand on like, no, guys, we're we're stepping into the next generation. Sorry. Yeah, like we're very clearly because I thought the first game that was really going to do that was, um, the Batman Arkham Knight. Um, cause when yeah. they announced it, they're like, no, it's not coming to the old thing. Sorry. But like, we need that power. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see more, more companies already. We're not, we're what, a year in now? Less than a yeah. year in? Um, and companies are already like, Zip, sorry, see you later. Old stuff. Um, yep. And the last news story we have here is cause for celebration. Finally, some of the really hard to find and pretty games are getting re released. Yeah, they are. Uh, GOG seems to be leading the charge here. So, the six games that are out right now uh, X Wing, uh, yes. Special Edition, yes. 10 bucks. Excellent. TIE Fighter, 10 bucks. Both Sweet. those games are really good. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic, um, 10 bucks. That's a mm-hmm. really solid game. There's a lot of yeah. game there. That was a Game Club game not too long ago. That's true. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Yeah. Six bucks. That's a steal for an outstanding game. Oh, I wonder if I can get that to run, run on uh, Scum VM on uh, uh, something. You know what? I think I, I wouldn't be surprised if GOG is using Scum VM. Ooh. Because they've done a lot of that in the past where they just, they just go talk to the people like, hey, you're doing this really well. Can we just license that? Yeah. Um, oh, Secret so of Monkey good. Island Special Edition. That's a, a pretty pretty great game. Yes. Yeah, I I really like that. And most importantly, one of the rarest Lucas Arts games, probably the second most rare. Sam and Max hit the road. Six yeah. bucks. Oh, about how time. how did they get through the licensing stuff? I I honestly don't know. I wish they would. I like that that's the stuff nightmare. I want to hear. Yeah. But um, Sam and Max hit the road runs on Windows, OS 10, and Linux. You have nice. no excuse. For running one of the best graphic, uh, one of the best point-click adventure games that Lucas Arts ever made. Mm-hmm. Please go play it. And the intro is supposed to be over the top. Don't turn it off after like five minutes. <laughs> that intro is a little hard to swallow nowadays. Yeah. Um, man, super great. And uh, GOG just has the thing that says "and more to come." So hopefully, Dark oh. Forces. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Oh my God! It's, How long has it been since you played Dark Forces? Since it came out. So what, 15 Uh-oh. years ago? 20 yeah. years ago, maybe now? Oh, uh, I cannot wait to puke all over my keyboard. Oh, man. <laughs> that, game is, that game is something else now. Uh, all right, that's all our news stories. Let's move over to tweets. Hey. <laughs> uh, Angelo Fiorin writes in and says, Being in IT, what do you guys think about the 2.0 update messing up so many PS4s this week? My PS4 got stuck in rest mode. Did yours? Uh, we talked a little bit about our our issues. Um, yeah. I I think so. I work in IT at a at a software company, and we, you know, we we use the agile Scrum process. So our our cadence is every three weeks. So every three weeks yep. we deploy code. Um, I think that if we were in the position that Sony was in at my company a lot of us would be getting written up. Yeah. Because it means you haven't done testing. Yeah. Someone in QA is getting flogged, and a couple of junior developers are getting hung out to dry. Yeah. I, I just... To, I, I, can, I understand how this sort of stuff can happen. Oh, absolutely. I just think that when it's so easy to reproduce on millions of PS4s... Mm-hmm maybe somebody should have done something a little better in the test lab. Yes. I don't want to put Sony on blast because, of course, I don't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. But especially for an update that's so big and so important for Sony, so much of that OS has changed completely. Yeah, so, for the better. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a much better OS now. Um, and now you can up directly upload game clips to 
YouTube, like the thing, which is awesome thing we wanted from day one. And it truncates that giant list of games you have to just yeah. the twelve most recent, and then you have a library. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Sony's been doing a lot of work lately to catch up on the fantastic work that Microsoft has been doing in the OS. Mm-hmm. Like Microsoft just launched DLNA support. You know, yeah. like Microsoft is giving everybody what they really wanted. Um, I think that this isn't really a giant step. This isn't a misstep for Sony. Um, I think if they were bricking consoles, then this would probably be a rather large thing. Yeah. I just think it's something where after the PS3, you have to have a couple of years of really great firmware updates that don't brick your, your machine before people start to ignore firmware updates. Um, cause I think when you look at back at the PS3, it's just like, Oh God, I have another firm. Oh, it's going to take like three hours. I just wanted to play a game. And the <laughs> PS4 has done so much better on that. Yeah. But it hasn't been enough time. So this isn't, this isn't the update they needed. Unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, many Derek writes in and says, uh, game you're most looking forward to in 2015. Also, what do you think of SharePlay? Tried it yet? I've not tried SharePlay yet. Nope. Um, game I'm most looking forward to in 2015. Mmm, that's a good question. I don't even know what's coming out in 2015. Let me pull yeah, my head. Yeah. Let's pull up a list, gentlemen. Yeah. You've got Saints Row Gat out of hell. Well, yeah, I'm. I don't know. You know, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to that game because it's more Saints Row, but it's kind of more Saints Row Four. So yeah. I'm not as excited. So you've also got uh, uh, Bloodborne. Yeah, I'll see how that turns out. Ooh, Final Fantasy Type Zero HD. I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Uh, Witcher Three is one I'm definitely looking forward to. I'm curious to see how that turns out on PS4. Yeah, uh, Mighty Number no. Nine. I'm definitely looking forward to. Yeah, that that could be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do we have? Dead Island Two is coming out. I forgot about that. Ew. Um, <laughs> I really hated. Hopefully, the first it will one. be good this time. <laughs> yeah, I I don't have high hopes, as you can tell. <laughs> no. Oh, here we go. Probably my first, my five. my best one. Metal Gear Solid Five: Phantom Pain. Oh well, yeah. That's, I I keep forgetting that's coming out in 2015. I keep allegedly. thinking that's going to be like, yeah. I really feel like that's going to move to 2016, if not 2017. No. You know, I, I just. I, uh, what should we call it? Starcraft Two: Into the Void. Oh Legacy yeah, is that void. coming out? It's got to be coming out next year. It's not coming, is that out, this coming year. out. That would be nice. <laughs> it has to. Um, Uncharted Four will probably come out next yeah. year. Quantum Break. I'm interested to see what that is. Yeah, I want to see if that if that is going to be good. Yeah. Uh, Persona 5. Oh, yeah. Persona 5, allegedly. 2015. Yeah. Hopefully no Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. Yeah, I hope No Man's Sky turns out to be good. Yeah. It'd be good. Uh, There's a lot of stuff I'm looking forward to, like the new Legend of Zelda that maybe 2015... You know, mm-hmm. StarCraft 2, maybe 2015. Xenoblade Chronicles X, like maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3 might come out. I don't know. Final Fantasy 15, maybe. A giant dog yeah. just climbing on knobs. That'll definitely <laughs> happen in 2015. That always happens. What went wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Watch the live stream, folks. Oh, Crackdown for Xbox One. Oh, yes, yeah. Crackdown, I'm excited. Yeah. Did not realize that was coming oh, out. Oh, huh? Amplitude. Come on. The second Amplitude. Amplitude game should be coming yeah. out in 2015. That's going to be sweet. All right, 2015 shaping up to be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we, we, we got a bunch of stuff that looks pretty cool. Oh, and um, the new uh, non-Tiger Woods golf game from EA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, all right, 2015, you're, you're, you're doing okay. Shaping up. Yeah. Good Look job. Good job. So a lot of stuff... To look forward to in 2015, like a dog making out with knobs. Uh, <laughs> next tweet here, riding that train, Adderblack39 writes in and says, Do you think that people are getting ahead of themselves saying that 2015 is going to be a great year for gaming? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. 
Um, but it sure seems like it. I just like getting excited about the possibility of great new games coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully they're I'm good. always excited. I'm always excited to play new stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Batman Arkham Knight. I don't know. Below, coming out for Xbox One. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, that'd be nice if it actually happens. Um, <laughs> Dead or Alive 5, Last Round. That's coming out in 2015. Hmm. Uh, yep, a lot of game clips coming up for that one. And the yeah, Division, a... allegedly coming out in 2015. We'll see. Uh, Evolve, we were talking about that earlier. New Rainbow Six. That could be interesting, if it is as interesting as the gameplay we saw at uh, E3. I'm curious to see what the public reaction to Halo 5 is. Oh, um, yeah. Probably yeah. not something I'm maybe picking up, but curious to see if it's any good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, not a lot of other stuff that we haven't already talked about. Mortal Kombat yeah. X, <laughs> that's coming out. That might be good. Ali Ali 2 for you, Hannah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that does come out, doesn't yep. it? Sweet. A lot of Resident Evil games. Oh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. <laughs> mm -hmm. I forgot about that. I'm super looking forward to that. <laughs> On my Xbox I just... One. I still can't get over that they're calling the new Resident Evil uh, HD the Resident Evil HD Remastered. Yeah, just the coming right they're out on it. Remastering the HD version that came out like a game decade game. ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, do we have any more tweets? Nope. Moving on to the only email I got, we got this week. Uh, Sweet. Sam L, a.k.a. Modular, e Modular. Uh, writes in and says, thank you so much for giving me some more info about the AC series. He wrote in last week asking about uh, why haven't they done multiplayer yet. Um, mm -hmm. My friends over at Powerhoof, an indie game company, have given us Crawl, which I'm pretty sure you talked about a couple episodes ago. Yes, I would love to play Crawl. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's four-player couch co-op, so that's not going to happen. Um, oh, yeah. I think I was talking about that in uh, terms of Bitbash. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he says, I love games like that along with Gang Beasts that require three friends and pizza and soda to play to its full potential. Which, yes. Like, that's that's a revitalization of the old Genesis days where it's like, I don't know, a friend and I are here. We're going to play either Toe Jam and Earl or Streets of Rage. Yeah, We're going to play Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because my friend just keeps punching me in the face on Street to Rage. She doesn't get that it hurts me. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you guys have any local multiplayer games that you favor? Um, yeah. I, not recently. Yeah. Fighting games, that's always kind of a good standby. Soul yeah. Calibur is always a solid uh, solid standby for me, yep. um, as well as the Ticket to Ride, the um, Xbox version, and You Don't Know Jack is always a go-to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, That's same good. thing with um, Seen It. Seen It's yep. always plus. Seen It was great. I've actually been meaning to um, pick up Fibbage by the same company as that makes... Um, mm -hmm. uh, you actually play it with your uh, smartphones. You go mm -hmm. to a website and you put in a code that the console is showing you. Um, and yeah. everybody gets to put in, like, basically you make up answers, and you get points for who you fool by your answers. Nice. Um, it's supposed to be great. I think it's either free or just a couple bucks. Uh, D-Voice in chat says Smash is a good party game for sure. I mean, Smash, Mario Party. Oh, Mario Party. Depending on how much party. you hate your friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything recently that's really good, except for maybe... Castle Crashers. That was a that was a good uh, game to to play with a bunch of friends. Fantastic. Um, uh, I would say uh, Mercenary Kings is a pretty decent couch co op. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, he continues. Um, I'm kind of tired of games like Halo and Call of Duty that just get super repetitive. I think indie developers are sort of getting the uh, the spotlight at the moment. So, do you have any recommendations? I've heard about cool stuff like Screen Cheat and Killer Queen, stuff like that. Oh God, Killer Queen is so cool! Like, if you get an opportunity to play that game, play it. It is there is a permanent machine if you're in Chicago, uh, at I think it's called Logan Hardware. It's an arcade, hmm. and it's uh. 
yeah, it's really cool. Um, pick up uh, if you just want general indie recommendations. Pick up Risk of Rain. Yes, uh, that's a really solid, uh, uh, pretty different roguelike. Yeah, same with Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Yep. Uh, hopefully, Binding of the uh, Binding of Isaac Rebirth is good because um, mm. I could recommend the original, um, but this new one should have plenty of improvements over it. Um, yeah. Shovel Knight. Yes. If you like sixteen bit Knight, platformers? Pick that up. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Stanley Parable is another solid one. Yep. If you haven't played that, it depends. It really depends on what you're playing on because there's a ton of really great ones. Uh, Lethal League, which I've talked about on the show yes. before. Is a ton of fun. That's a good catch co-op game. Yeah, that's another great one. Uh, I know I've got some more here. I'd have to look uh, through my Steam library yeah, for more I, stuff. I <laughs> just I just popped it open. Uh, Delver, which is like this weird first-person like dungeon crawly thing. Oh yeah. Um, not necessarily indie, but I, I guess you could still consider it I indie think so. because yeah. well, the, uh, Brutal Doom is a great mod for a great like the original indie game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, Doom and Doom 2. Yep. Um, what else? What else? I'm trying to think of other stuff. Oh, Dust and Elysian Tale? That was made by one yeah. dude. Wow. The only person, who, the only people who didn't directly work on the game were the voice actors. Yeah. And some of oh, the music. That makes sense. Um, boy, there's, I'm trying to think of stuff that's also on consoles that's really good. Yeah. Um, I've always been partial to Fez. I know it's a very controversial choice. Yeah, um, but ignore who made it and enjoy the game. <laughs> it's, what, it's how what I tell people when when I, I recommend any Megadeth album. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not dissimilar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Nobs, any indie games that you've loved? Oh man, I it, I don't know if you would consider. I mean, like Castle Crashers was great. I think that's um, an indie game. I played I played a lot of that game. Yeah. But it's something I've been... Uh, Geometry Wars. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, that's still a go-to staple in my in my gaming. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I've kind of like gone away from digging up those games because I have so much stuff I have to play. Well, and you know, I, I think piggybacking on some of the stuff we were talking about last week with demos for games... Mm-hmm. I think so many demos of those Xbox Live arcade games sold us on the game. Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, like, what was it? Gatling Gears? Gatling Gears was awesome. Uh, yeah, I would have never picked one. that up if I wouldn't have played the demo. And I'm like, an hour in, they're like, hey, do you want to buy this game? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I do. do. <laughs> well, look, uh, at, look at Renegade Ops. Like, that was oh, a game yeah. that was just, was just there. I think, nice. I think both of those are indie games, too. D-Voice in chat says, Papers, Please. Uh, that's a really great game. Yeah, uh, um, I would say Bastion I, and Transistor. Yes, both phenomenal. And Beat Hazard. Oh yeah. Oh, Beat Hazard's Beat Hazard, a great yeah. one. Yep. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Nautica Crash. Yeah, Nautica Crash, made by some uh, dude about three hundred years ago. Yeah, it's so good though. Uh, I <laughs> I think the nice thing about where indie games are right now is typically. Virtually any indie game you pick up now is going to be pretty great. Yeah. Um, especially with how the Steam store filters that stuff. Especially if a game makes it to the Xbox One and the PS4 and it's an indie game, it's probably going to be really good. So it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to... It's hard to find a, a a really bad indie game right now that if it looks really bad, it's probably going to be really bad. Like, it's yeah. it's pretty clear who who puts the time into this stuff nowadays. Um, he says, also, I'm happy to be able to attend PAX East when that happens. Will you guys be there? I'd love to beat you at Crawl. Um, um, I will not be at PAX East, but there's a 90% chance I will be at PAX Prime this coming nice. year. Yeah. I have to make it to PAX Prime some year. Yeah. It's up the coast from me now. You should do it this year. Yeah. Maybe. Um, you would be you would be if if this if this trip goes through as planned you would be the fifth mike to join us i have four friends named mike that are going with me potentially to pax prime yeah (laughs) like you're gonna introduce him as mike yeah no well obviously not none of them are mike except for i think one of them yeah 
It's a world of full of mics, that's why. It is. It really is. Uh, actually, we have one last tweet here that didn't show up in Tweet Deck for some reason from Moon Peer. Hey, Moon. Uh, says, what are your thoughts on alphas and betas being used as demos and the public perception as of such? P.S. Evolve? Kind of awesome. Awesome all in caps. Um, I feel like a lot of companies now are legitimately using these things as alphas and betas for like either network tests or in the case of destiny getting uh public feedback um stuff like this i feel like in the case of evolve it's early enough it's you know three four months until evolve is going to come out so it's probably early enough that they can resolve any common issues that they're seeing uh, yeah. along with doing a network test um but if your game comes out in two or three weeks and you're doing an alpha that's not an alpha that's no, not a that beta. Isn't, that's, if that's an alpha, then you should not be you should not be yeah. releasing your game. Either call it a demo or call mm -hmm. it a network test. Like you can yeah, you right. can do either one. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but if companies are gonna make a a demo and call it a beta, that it kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, know, think, I think it's smart that the way mm -hmm. they're doing it oh, now. Yeah. Get, I mean, they're getting free testers. Free yeah, yeah. testers. Totally. And all I gotta do is watch a message board. Yeah. Well, and this is it's a good way to do network stress testing. I if 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 Drive Club had had a uh, beta or an alpha like Evolve is doing, they would be in the mess they're in. They yeah. would have been able to pinpoint the problem and then come out in front of it instead of releasing a broken game. Yeah. Uh, which would have been really beneficial to them. At the same time, I think um, the usage of the terms alpha and beta in software development have gotten sort of lost now mm -hmm. uh, because no one seems to realize that uh, an alpha when, when it was still like an alpha build means like your art assets aren't even finished yet yeah it it basically works but maybe not. yeah yeah it <laughs> yeah. works like a, it works like a solid 60 percent of the time yeah and it looks like crap so let us know 60 percent of the time it works 100 percent of the time yeah. Uh, Easy there, a, Sex Panther. Yeah. <laughs> and a beta is just like, well, a, a beta has always, almost always been sort of like an early access demo uh, yeah. for a lot of things. You know, they, they will send out beta tests to, you know, reviewers and things like that. Um, but nowadays it's just, they're marketing terms and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that's all the emails and tweets we have this week. Thank you very much, everyone, for writing in. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv. Email us, tvgpfans at gmail.com. Tweet us at tvgp, and everything else is on the right-hand side of the page. And come join the forums. Don't forget to mark yourselves in the map. Uh, join us for 10 p.m. Uh, Monday night game night. That is 10 p.m. EST for Battlefield 4 until we find a suitable replacement. Um... <laughs> Steam game night, Thursday night game night, uh, join the club uh, is on the forums and on Steam, and Wednesday night is PS4 game night. Yep. Uh, there is currently no TVGP game club game. I'll be putting up a voting thread uh, either later today or early tomorrow. Um, stay tuned to the TVGP RSS feed for the uh, recap of The Darkness 2, yep. and we should have that uh, stream archived on YouTube in the relatively near future as well. So um, check it out. And don't forget, you can watch this show live, twitch.tv slash E1M1 Network. And don't forget to check out the places we're kind of recently on. Uh, E1M1 Network on uh, Tumblr and mm. Reddit, the E1M1 subreddit. Yes. Um, and if there's a place that we're not, especially a place that if this, then that can automate, like most places, um, let me know. Shoot me an email. Cool places that you'd like to see us. And don't forget, you can always find us on Stitcher. Since seemingly everybody, except for the three people that make this show, uh, I use, use it. Use there we go. Two people yeah, you that do? make the show don't use this. Yep, uh, I use Stitcher. But we are we are a Stitcher partner, um, so uh, don't forget you can find us there. Um, and that's our episode. We'll see you all next week. Later. Peace. I I never wrote down any titles. I got a few I here. Did but not I I no, I very quickly noticed the absence of Jay Z in chat and was like, oh, I should probably get my notebook. Uh, that's the hole <laughs> in my heart that happened. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, Jay Z. We need some titles, man. Yeah, and puns. Yes. Oh, the puns. Oh. Uh, all right. So I've got become a power member. Uh, new cackles. Bars needed to be filled. Tackle in war chiefs. 
Lakey Town, My Brand, My Brand. Mark and Fools, Glowy Hand of Elfish Doom, uh, Beast Rider Style, Revengeancers, uh, No Wonder He's Such a D, Wordless Howl, Something Happened Man, Graphical Juggernaut, and I Would Very Much Like a Patch. I really like Revengeancers. Revengeancers? Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I loved it. Because I, I'm a big fan stuff. of Glowy Hand of Elfish Doom, but Revengeancers just got it's yeah. punchier. Elfish Doom is a little too long. Yeah. All right, starting in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 367 for November 3rd, 2014. Revengeancers. Obey. Kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much for watching the live stream. Appreciate just a ton of people showing up every week. Yep. See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.